Right guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about what to expect when you're buying an Audi RS3. Right guys, I thought I'd make this video to let you guys out because when I was looking for an Audi RS3, I had loads of questions that sometimes didn't get answered in reviews that I watched online. And also, when I did watch reviews, I was hearing things and I thought, surely that's not true. That can't, surely they're not that good. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, just so I can clear things up. When I was watching art reviews from people who weren't owners of a car, owners of an Audi RS3, and people who review cars every day and always say that they're good. So you never know what to believe when you're watching car reviews. So I'm gonna try and keep it as short and as sweet as possible, but try and keep it detailed still. So the first thing is, well the main point in all this video really, everything you hear about Audi RS3s that's positive, believe. Like, for instance, I heard, well someone, on one of the videos that I watched, someone said that it sounds like an Audi RS3 when you go through tunnels and now when I drive my car and I go through a tunnel I laugh at myself because it's like well it actually does sound like an Audi R8 sorry I think I just said Audi RS3 before but yeah I meant Audi R8 when you drive through a tunnel it actually sounds like an Audi R8 and it's absolutely mental when I heard it on the review I was like no surely not but it does it's crazy so everything you hear believe that don't mean go and watch all the reviews now and just believe everything you hear because obviously that's not time, well well, it's not going to thing, it's not, not going to be good for t time consuming is it? Um, watch this video, I'm going to keep it as detailed as possible and still try and have it short and tell you exactly what to expect when, not, when buying an Audi RS3. Because obviously it's when, when you're looking to buy one, you want to know what you're bu buying into before you buy it. So some main points what we'll cover is obviously the performance the handling, the sound, the attention it gets, and obviously the aesthetic, is it aesthetically pleasing kind of thing. So we'll start with performance. Everyone knows it's going to be fast. I came from a 215 brake horsepower Fiesta ST, which some people say is quite a jump, which it, it probably is quite a jump to be fair. Um, so obviously I didn't know what to expect. I've never been in a car that had this much power before apart from on a racetrack but that, it's a totally different sense uh, speed you can't really tell how fast you're going on a racetrack so when I jumped in this for the first time driving it home from the uh, Audi dealer put my foot down first time threw me back and I just had a big smile on my face I can't fault the power of this car it put, can put it down well and it does it pulls you back and holds you back and all your passengers realize that when we get in the car um, so yeah, the reason it can put the power down is obviously at the Quattro system, so we'll get onto handling now. Handling, I can't fault it at all. I throw this car into corners quite quite fast and sometimes go out of my comfort zone a bit. And I'm yet once to lose control of it kind of thing. I'm only, well, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't slip out at all. Unless you take the traction control and put, put your foot down a bit going around the corner and back end will kick out a bit because the quattro system in this car is really well it's, it's really well installed really and well, really well built because it can send up to 100% of power to rear wheels if you put your foot down well going around the corner or anything like that so it's basically a rear wheel drive when you're going around the corner I, f I think I'm, I, well correct me on this if you know but I think you've got to turn traction control off for that because I did it the other day and I keep the back out a bit when I turn the traction control off. Well, whereas before, when I have the traction control on, I've done it and it hadn't really done it. So, yeah, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's it. So that's the handling. Like I said, you can't fault it at all. Best car I've ever drove for handling, which you expect with RS models and Quattro anyway, because Audi's always been at the top with the four-wheel drive. Next thing is the build quality. The build quality of this car is unbelievable. I don't hear any noises when I'm driving, no, sometimes you get in a brand new car and something's creaking or banging or something like that. Every single button you press just feels like you're, you're pressing something that's really expensive, really well built, which it should be, because that's what you're paying for. The, obviously the outside of the car, 
everything's fit well, everything's really robust and I can't fault it one bit at all. So the next point is the tension it gets. It gets some t well a lot of people say the Audi RS3 lays under the radar and it's really subtle subtle features on it that really make it stand out sometimes. So the big oval exhaust pipes for the RS and obviously the front grille, they're the two main main parts I think you'd say on the Audi RS um, model. Obviously big brakes you do realise but I think with my car, because I got the RS sports exhaust on and this colour, I think that makes it stand out a bit more. Whereas if you had a, a darker colour, I think you'd lay under the radar and you would get past people without um, realising what you're driving. Because some people prefer to lay under the radar so you can you don't have to worry about where you're parking some people might not realise if it's a, like a dark colour or something like that if you're parking up sometimes I don't want to leave it on streaks people get jealous people scratch cars on purpose because they're idiots um, low lives but yeah I, if you want it to lay under the radar I'd say get a darker colour or not this R of blue anyway I've got R of blue it's really just stand out everyone looks um, what else to talk about the sound of a car. The sound of a car, I will say, but it's not. It doesn't pop and crackle as much as the older model Audi RS3, the pre facelift one. But it sounds unbelievable. Like I just said earlier on in the video, it sounds like an Audi R8 when you go through tunnels. I mean, what more can you want from a 60 grand car? Well, full, well, when it's fully spec'd up at 60 grand, so a 45 grand car. What more can you want? Sounds like an Audi R8. Everyone's turning reds. Unbelievable, it does pop and crackle still. You get enough pops and crackles. Um, but yeah, I can't fault the sound of this car one bit. Next point I'll go on to is the infotainment system. I've got the. the obviously, well, you get a standard. I've got the virtual cockpit, you get the virtual cockpit as standard. And that's the best bit of kit I've ever had in a car. Hands down, the best. Can't fault it one bit. It takes a bit of getting getting used to it at the start, but once you get used to it, it's unbelievable. You've got the amount of things you can do with it, and um, you can even get a G-force meter on it, which is a bit a bit crazy if you ask me. Um, and it, it's one G when you do a launch control as well, which is absolutely unbelievable for a car of this this um, size. And obviously, it's only a hot hatch. Well, people say it's not hatch. You don't normally see 1G um, on G meter on um, an arch. So yeah, if there's any if there's any things you want to know about the car, what you're worrying about before you buy it, or if you're just interested in general, put them down in the comments and I'll definitely answer them. Is there any extras that I think are a must on this car? Yeah, there is. Yeah, I'd say that the Comfort and sound pack, I'd definitely get that, 100%. And the, the speakers, the banging off the sound, sound system is unbelievable. Um, I'd definitely get the Audi Sport pack, which comes with the sports exhaust. And I'm not sure what else it comes with, but it comes with a few other nice things as well. Um, but yeah, the price of the Audi RS3 is a bit, is a bit daft. Obviously, it's a bit high. And a lot of people question, is it worth getting the Audi RS3 over the A45? And that is one thing that I will question as well. So, all I can say is, now I've got the Audi RS3, I look at the A45 and I can see where the difference in price comes into play. You can definitely tell that Audis are made a lot better. And apart from the aero kit on the A45, it's not up to much at all, I don't think. It's just obviously it's a bit of a chavy car, a lot of people say anyway. But yeah, apart from the aero kit, if you didn't have the aero kit, then half the time you can't even tell it's an A45, apart from the front grille, it's a bit different with the AMG grille. Um, the, sound of a car, <coughs> the sound of a car, when you upshift on an A45, it's a lot, I think the when it pops, it's, 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 not, it's not louder, but it's higher pitch, so it sounds louder. But the general exhaust tone, is nowhere near as good as an Audi RS3, so definitely wins it from that point. And obviously the build quality, and well, it's an all-around better car now, I think. 
is there any other um, extras that I think you should get? Obviously, at the front, you, you normally under your grill, it's either black titanium, or if you get if you don't get any at all, it's going to be your standard body colour. I definitely say you get either titanium or black. I've got black on mine, so obviously I've got a black pack, all blacked out. So yeah, I would definitely say you get some get one of them extras. They're both eight hundred pounds, and I know the extras with Audi are really expensive. I mean, they use a lot of them what you kind of need, but they're definitely definitely worth getting. It definitely makes the car really good. A good feature what I would advise you to get is a panoramic sunroof. It's it's nice to have when you when it's well when it's red hot like it is today. It's it's twenty nine and a half degrees now. And when you've got it open, it's just like having a convertible, it's it's crazy, it's really nice, it's more more sounding, so you can have a car better, especially when you go through tunnels, unbelievable. But yeah, if you need to know anything about the car, put it in the comments below, I'll get back to all the comments, or as many as I can. But apart from that, I can't really think what else to tell you, but yeah, this is all the points that I wanted to know when I was looking to buy the car. If you want to know how much I'm paying for the car and things like that, I put a video on yesterday, uploaded it, yeah, it will be yesterday, today, about car financing and how much I'm paying for the car. Do go and have a look at that if you want to know how much I'm paying for it and maybe get tips on how to get it cheaper. But apart from that, comment what you want, uh, what else you want to see or want to hear about my car and what, what questions you have to ask if you're looking to buy one or you're just interested in general but until next time guys that's it thanks for watching we'll see you later bye